Okay, so now we are continuing with um, motion in a plane, but let's look at vectors. And the first one we're going to look at is a uh, position vector. So if we've got motion in two dimensions, then uh, one of the choices for our axes is an x and a y axis, or a, and these are perpendicular reference axes. So if you've got um, a position, say you've got a position of this this particle here or this ball or whatever, um, we can represent it using an x component and a y component. Okay, I think we all know about that. So, so the example over here of this um, ball that's moving with the cart is that at this point it has um, an x component of 0.22 meters and a y component of minus 4.42. Now, um, What's important to see here is that its position is then given by this vector. Okay? So this vector is made up of two components, an x component and a y component. So this is the uh, displacement vector, the position vector. Okay? So we have something similar over here. Um, we are now, instead of just looking at um, freefall, which is in one direction, one, uh, one dimension, we're looking at this ball moving in uh, two-dimensional space. So, um, we can see that it has this kind of this resultant displacement, which is due to these two components, delta x and delta y. And so, how do we actually get to this final uh, vector there, that, that resultant vector, it is made up of these two components, delta x and delta y, and we can see that um, the displacement in the earth reference frame is the vector sum, this is important, it's the vector sum of the horizontal displacement delta x and the vertical displacement delta y. Okay, so what is a vector sum? How do you add up vectors? Well, you, the one way is to simply take the, the one vector and place the tail of the one vector at the head of the other vector. And then you add them up like this. This is in one dimension. In two dimensions, you take the one vector and then you take the tail of the other vector and place it at the head of that vector. And so we get then, that is the resultant vector. Okay? So it's the same over here. We have the delta x vector, uh, position vector. We have the delta y position vector. And so if you add that, if you take the ta this vector over here that's pointing down and you place it over there such that the tail is at the head of that vector, you will get this resultant displacement vector. And by the way, the order does not matter. If you took this one first, the delta x, and then added delta y to get this delta r, it's the same as if you took delta y and added, if you took delta x and placed it there, you would get this delta r. Okay. All right.